Hello, my name is Sven P. In this video I'm going to show you how to build Bilbo's house from the Lord of the Rings. The prefabs that you want to use can be seen on the screen right now. I like to start off when building with placing everything out on the map, so that whenever I need something I can just look around and find it. To start off your build, grab the round door from Lucky Park, make sure build to prop is on, and resize it 4 times bigger. The magic number when resizing is actually 5, this way you will avoid having these gaps in between here. But since I was going to have wooden beams in between, the gap didn't really bother me at all. I'm grabbing this from the variant rock gallery, making it a tiny bit smaller, and I'm gonna use that for a stairway going up to Bilbo's house. Some of them I turn around, so that the stairs will have a little bit of variety to them, making them look a lot better. If you want to visit this map yourself, the code is on the screen right now. I'm going to be using this map as my own little artistic hub. From here you can travel to Minas Tirith, you can travel to Hogwarts, Starcourt Mall, a bunch of epic castles. This is all possible because of the new device that they added to Creative, the matchmaking device. I'll get more into that at the end of the video. But if you like this content, please consider using code SVEN1205 in the item store and subscribe to the channel. In the grass and dirt floor gallery, there are a lot of different grass pieces. Some of them has a big green block under them and grass on top. Some of them have only grass. The blocks that have only grass are really good for filling in the blank. For example, I wanted these stairs to look a little bit overgrown. And just adding those grass pieces on them, I felt like really made the build alive. I'm grabbing the plank from the pirate ship, the one that you will walk if you don't subscribe. When resizing the height of this plank, it starts sticking out quite a lot, which makes it possible to make some really interesting shapes. For some detail, and also for closing in the gap here, I'm placing some of these planks on the bottom. And then I'm grabbing the planks again to make another interesting shape. I'm going to have an arch above the entrance, and then to finalize this very cozy shape, go to the Scoundrel's Rest prefab, grab this plank, resize it, and then connect it to the arch. This will be the edge of the roof, which will eventually be filled with grass, in true Hobbit style. Grab this big bush from Variant Foliage Gallery A, make it a little bit smaller, and this will be used on the edge of the roof. Spin around while you place them, so that they won't all be facing the same direction. I'm using those because they make for a lot better edge than grass, and they look pretty decent together with grass. If I just had grass on the edge, I'd have a lot of square edges, because the grass blocks can be very difficult to work with sometimes. Like I touched on earlier, the grass pieces that doesn't have that big flat green block under them are very useful for covering gaps and corners. So what you can see me do right now is just that, and that makes the roof look really natural. I'm making the grass hill a little bigger by copy-pasting this around in a circle and then doing the same on the other side. You can see that a lot of these gaps are appearing here, but that's perfectly fixable with the technique that I was talking about earlier. From the residential outdoor prop gallery, there are a lot of flowers and props that I'm going to use to decorate the outside of Bilbo's house to make it look really cozy. Then I'm placing a bunch of these bushes again. I'm trying to create a natural transition here between the flat outside of the house and the hill. Then I'm grabbing some vines from the nature shrub gallery. Make sure you grab the ones that are in the middle, because they have longer rendering distance. These are going to be hanging down on the walls. They're gonna look really nice and make the shire cozy again. There's not a lot of left except some detailed work, so I'm fixing some of the gaps in the grass, but I'm adding a little bit of flowers here, and the fence around the thing. A lot of the flowers that I added are flowers that originally come in pots. All you gotta do to make yourself your little garden is to just hide the pots on the ground, 
and you'll have a lot of alternatives for flowers. So I'm placing a little bit more grass all over the place, filling the gaps, adding some trees. And that concludes part one of this video. Now it is time for the interior. I was saying earlier that when increasing a wall or a ceiling in size, the magic number is 5. You can see on these ceilings there that it wasn't until I increased the size one more time that they connected to each other. It's much easier to build when resizing something 5 times than 4. So even though the walls that I use here are increased 4 times in size, you should consider this build a 5 time increase. And if you build this yourself and you decide that you want to increase the walls 5 times in size instead of 4 as I did, you'll probably have an easier time building this. Because it's so much easier to see where things are supposed to go to make things symmetrical. Because I didn't do it that way, there was a couple of times where I had to make some changes. But it worked out fine. As you can see, I'm placing these walls and doors from Lucky Park back to back. So that I will only have the outside sticking out because the outside is white and cool. Also the round doors then becomes thicker. Something that fits very well with Bilbo's house. This part of the build is quite difficult actually. But as long as you resize these walls to 5 times up instead of 4 as I did, a master builder like yourself is not gonna have too much trouble with this, I think. For the roof, I wanted it to feel round, so I'm grabbing some more pieces from the pirate ship, then rotating and resizing them a little, and it will create the perfect arch shape for a hobbit house. I'm grabbing the plank again, and I decided to use that as beams to hold the roof up. It will create more of a feeling of roundness to the whole build, which fits really well with the Hobbit house. I resized them to be really tall and really thin, and I'm using them in all these rooms. I realized that on the corners, it's easier if I make them a little bit wider. This little plank here, I'm going to place where the wall meets the roof and that's because having that little plank there makes that edge look so much better. Also I grabbed the arch from outside and placed that on top of those beams. The combination of the white walls and the round pirate props looks amazing together. And just wait until this whole thing is furnished. Now I'm gonna copy paste almost all that I've made here, everything except one of these rooms. I'm trying to have the round doors overlap each other to figure out exactly where to put it. And this will be the first out of two times when I'm copy pasting a huge chunk like this. All of the ceilings that I'm using now is from the prefab Paradise Palms Hotel. I'm using a little bit of a variety of different ceilings designs because it helps creating a sense of variety when the different rooms don't look exactly the same. I'm also making a big dining room for misbehaving dwarves to intrude, eat all your food and make you feel like you have no control of your own home. Then start singing and dancing, throwing your plates around and suddenly magically having done all your dishes. And before you know what's happening, you're taken out of your home on an adventure where a dragon almost eats you. As glorious and epic as this room here is getting, it did end up being too big. So here's just a little heads up that the dining room will be made a little bit smaller later. Anyways, now it is time to make some glorious interior here. Of course, placing interior is really important, but it is a lot easier to make a cool interior. And not as interesting, I think, personally. So a lot of that is not gonna be in the video. It's not like you are gonna need the how-to guide for placing a table next to a wall and then placing a chair next to the table, then placing a cupboard next to another wall, 
That sort of thing doesn't really need to be that much of in the video, but there's a little bit of it. Here, for example, I'm making a gigantic, glorious table. So I'm just using one table and placing a bunch of them next to each other to make it one big table. That's better than resizing it, because if I resize it, the plates on the table gets a lot bigger as well. And unless you're a giant, you'd prefer to have a regular sized plate, probably. Also, the room should probably be regular sized, which is why I made it a little bit smaller. I just copy-paste half of it and placed it a little closer to the left, and that way, it became a perfect size. These lights are from the Haunted Manor gallery. They look a lot like what is in the actual movies. Same with these ones in the roof here, which is why I think this is really cool here. I'm now copy-pasting for the second time. Unfortunately, for the amount of stuff that I want to copy, I only have enough to copy the walls and ceilings and the general shapes of things, but not the decoration. But that's okay. The point with this hall is to recreate the long crooked hall that is in Bilbo's house. This is not an exact replica of his house, but I wanted to make it feel as much as his house as possible. And I'm really happy with the results. So that concludes the building part of this video. If you have watched this far without skipping, I really want you to know that you are amazing. If you did skip towards the end, however, you're still amazing, but you will not get the satisfaction of knowing this. I added a little bit more nature on the outside, and I turned on yellow fog 40%, light 100%, and time of day 5am for some epic showcasing. Let's walk through this thing.